this year, I went through a torturous tradition that every high schooler must endure, health class. <laughs> I remember health class very well, and there was one thing that struck me the most about it. It was our unit on substance abuse. I remembered sitting there and the teacher lecturing us about how drugs affected you, how your teeth would start rotting out, or how you would go through withdrawals. But I sat there thinking, that's only part of the story. Today I'm going to tell you the other part of the story. The emotional ripples that substance abuse causes. Think of substance abuse as a rock being thrown into a pond. As it hits the water, it creates a ripple effect. Small waves that get larger and larger as they move further away from the epicenter. My story starts four years ago, when my life was simple and there was no ripples in my pond. Four years ago, I was a happy 12-year-old living the life. I had great grades and I loved going to school. And I was immersed in many activities, especially in performing arts. I had a mother and father who both worked, an older sister who was a senior in high school, and a younger sister whose smile would light up the room. I was never really close with my extended family, but my immediate family, we did everything together. One Saturday morning, I awoke just like any other Saturday. I awoke to a dark room where the blinds blocked out most of the morning light. But that day wasn't just an ordinary day. My two younger cousins were coming to visit. At the time, this struck me as strange because I've never really seen them outside an occasional family reunion or the short glimpses I got when I went to my grandparents' house. I mean, I would talk to them, but they didn't even know my name. My mom said that they were staying for the weekend and we were to make them feel at home. As she said this, red flags started popping up in my head. I had so many questions like, why now and what's going on? But at the time, I just kind of let it go. But soon I would learn this would be the day that would change my life forever. That weekend turned into a week. That week turned into a month. And as I reflect on this time now, I see this is when the ripples were just beginning. Small inconveniences and annoyances. Like, my cousins weren't used to getting up as early as we were for school. And they frequently made us late. Or in the mornings when I would go to pack my lunch and I would reach my hand into the chip bag, and there were no more chips. As I look upon this now, these were just the small things. By this time, I could no longer suppress the questions I had inside. And not satisfied with my parents' answers, I started investigating, skulking around while they were having private conversations. This was a point in my adolescence where my entire world perception changed. I overheard my parents talk about how my uncle had been arrested. I was confused, and in my sheltered brain, I thought my family was all above being arrested, that they're all moral people. But sadly, the difference between the world I thought I knew and what it truly was, was vastly different. I went through this roller coaster of emotions, and eventually, I learned the hardest thing I've heard in my life so far. My uncle was a drug addict a heroin junkie. I was so overwhelmed with this juxtaposition between the world I thought I knew and the sad reality of what it truly was. My mom started opening up to me and my older sister, telling us the stories of what truly was going on in our family. I would hear stories of how my cousins would go to bed every night in a bed bug infested house. Or I would overhear conversations they would have with my mom where they were questioning her saying, there's not supposed to be bugs in my hair. Or when they would roll up their arms and I would see the cigarette burns on them. I was so angry inside. I thought, how could anyone let this happen? I could feel the waves getting larger and larger around me, and I felt like I was being constantly knocked down with every new story I heard. Not even a year later, two weeks before Christmas, I awoke on another Saturday morning. But instead of sunshine waiting for me outside my window, 
It was the darkness of snow clouds moving slowly across the horizon. My mom and my sister were talking, and I could tell something was very wrong. My mom called me into my sister's room, shutting the door, and looked at me and said, your uncle died last night. I was shocked and confused, but the truly cruel part of it was, I didn't even feel sad. I'd become so used to the constant waves knocking me down that I didn't feel anything anymore. The only thing I could ask myself was, is this all over? But sadly, I was wrong. After my uncle's death, my family fell into anarchy. Where my life had been previously peaceful and happy, the new normal became angry family members breaking into our house and yelling at my parents. And fights over visitation and custody of my cousins. I'd become scared of what would happen next. Fear, sadness, and anger were all emotions I experienced as ripples moved through my family. I'd become so apprehensive that I would go through situations in my head where I would have to kill one of my own family members in order to protect myself. All I had left was a mother who soon became ill and had to leave her job. A father who has to work nights just to keep us afloat. An older sister who went off to college and dreads coming home because of fights. A younger sister whose world was so scrambled that she shut everything out, threatening suicide. Two younger cousins who were scared, and me, a then 14-year-old who stayed sane by throwing himself into extracurricular activities, spending 14 hours a day at school. And I have to say, if it wasn't for the overwhelming support I got from my friends and teachers, I don't know where I would be today. My story is nothing special. If you talk to thousands of other people who have substance abuse in their families, you will hear the same story. Mine is just one way events could unfold. There are people out there that were more affected than I ever was, who have experienced more devastation in their lives than we can even fathom. Already in 2017, 70% of autopsies done by Montgomery County have been drug overdoses. And in 2015 alone, 1,100 deaths in our area were attributed to heroin. We live in a society where we're taught right from wrong, not to do this or that, but rarely do we ever stop and think about what our actions can do to others. Addiction has affected every aspect of my life, and I wasn't even the user. So what I want you and every person in this world to think to yourselves is, what are my thoughts affecting? Who are my words and actions affecting? And who are you truly affecting in your lives? Thank you.